Welcome to MRI Scan Principles, Image Formation. There are 65 sets of questions, answers and flashcards, and multiple choice formats. Information is credited to MRIQuiz.com, Quizlet, and MRI in Practice. Highly recommended. Ready? Let's go! What element, hydrogen, oxygen, or helium, protons align themselves with the direction of the static magnetic field, B0, and its natural alignment in MRI scanning? Hydrogen The total number of excess protons aligned with the magnetic field is termed what, and it is proportional to magnetic field strength. It's called, the net magnetization vector, NMV. What signal is produced immediately following an RF pulse signal? Free induction decay is produced immediately. The process that digitizes the MR signals is known as? That process is called, Fourier transform. A file on the computer where the collected echoes are stored prior to being processed into an image by the Fourier transform. What is the term? Raw data. As can see in the picture on the left below. The storage location of MR signal data is? K space. Referring to K space, the data containing what are located along the outer lines? The data containing high resolution. Remember, high resolution is at the, outer lines. Also referring to case space, what information is located along the central lines? Signal and contrast, are at the central lines. Remember, high resolution, outer lines. Signal and contrast, central lines. Each line of case space is defined by what? by the phase encoding gradient. Collecting the low frequency, high amplitude signal, data points in case space at the start of the scan, in a spiral fashion, is known as what centric case space filling? It's known as elliptic centric case space filling. During what type of imaging for vasculature or visceral structures, contrast is administered, and case space is filled with what case space filling to ensure that the contrast enhancement is well visualized? During dynamic enhanced imaging, contrast is filled with centric case space filling. 2D acquisitions usually require what type of gap? Interslice gap. Long TRs are not advantageous in a 3D acquisition but a 3D sequence does provide greater SNR and elimination of what artifacts? Crosstalk artifacts will be eliminated. An increase in either the field of view will increase or decrease SNA. Increase field of view will increase SNA. What about increase in the number of slices or partitions, chunks, will increase or decrease SNA? That will increase SNA as well. What do you call the ability to generate images in scan planes in addition to the acquisition plane, yielding multiple slice plane orientations from one acquired data set? It's called multiplanar reconstruction, MPR. List two maximum intensity projection, MIP, functions. They are maximum intensity projection, Max IP and minimum intensity projection, min IP. Max IP is a reconstruction algorithm utilizing bright pixel intensities to create collapsed images of a data set, such as bright blood MRAs. Min IP is a software algorithm utilizing dark or hypo intense pixel intensities, creating reconstructed images, such as black blood angiography. In a fast thin echo pulse sequence, if the TSE factor, echo train length, is increased by a factor of 3, the scan time will be how many times faster? 3 times faster. In a fast spin echo sequence, 
The effect of TE are the echoes that are encoded with a low or high amplitude phase encoding gradient. They are encoded with a low amplitude. A small change in the magnetic field along a particular axis is defined as It's a gradient. A narrow receiver bandwidth increases or decreases susceptibility artifact and should never be used in the presence of metal implants. It's increases. What effects of receiver bandwidth on signal to noise and chemical shift? Lower receiver bandwidth leads to higher signal to noise and more chemical shift. List the characteristics of a wide receiver bandwidth. A wide receiver bandwidth generates lower signal to noise ratio images. It should be applied in anatomical regions that contain high fat and water interfaces. It is utilized with a high readout gradient amplitude. It lowers chemical shift and metal artifacts. And it lowers the scan time. What kind of bandwidth occurs during transmission describing properties of RF pulses, typically in the range of a few kilohertz? Transmit bandwidth. Now, what kind of bandwidth that is applied during reception of the MR signal has profound effect on overall SNR and susceptibility, typically in the range of 16 to 64 kilohertz? That is the received bandwidth. Received bandwidth aka acquisition bandwidth has a direct relationship to SNR. Decreasing bandwidth by a factor of 2 increases SNR by how much? Increases SNA by the square root of 2, which is approximately 40%. Remember, lower received bandwidth will increase SNA and increase chemical shift and metal artifacts. From what we have learned so far, can you guess the advantages of increasing receiver bandwidth? High received bandwidth reduces the sampling time T and shortens the sequence timing, allowing shorter TR and TE values. High received bandwidth shortens echo spacing resulting in less blurring. It reduces susceptibility artifacts. It reduces less chemical shift artifacts. It reduces less chemical shift artifacts and metal artifacts. And last but not least, it increases the available ETL. Since you already learned the advantages of high received bandwidth, you must know the disadvantages. Can you list a few of them? Wide receiver bandwidth has a larger noise sample due to a larger frequency range. Another disadvantage of wide receiver bandwidth is that it lowers SNR. And it requires a larger minimum which means it requires a large field of view due to a larger frequency range. The slice selection process affects slices. List 3. The slice selection process determines the slice orientation, slice thickness, and slice position. A steep slice select gradient slope yields thin or thick slice thickness. It yields a thin slice thickness. Decreasing the slice selection gradient strength will increase or decrease the slice thickness. It will increase. A thin slice thickness is achieved through what mechanisms? List 3. A thin slice thickness is achieved through the utilization of a steep, high amplitude slice select gradient and a narrow transmit bandwidth. The gradient that is on during the production of the echo is what? Is the frequency encoding, readout, gradient. The readout gradient is usually turned on during the what and also during frequency encoding. During the sampling or readout of the peak echo. What time is the time to sample the entire case baseline? Sampling time. How do you calculate the sampling time? 
The formula of sample time is frequency matrix, the number of samples, divided by receiver bandwidth. For example, if the frequency matrix is 256, and the received bandwidth is 32 kHz, you take 256 divided by 32, you will get 8 millisecond of sampling time. The time between sampling points is called what? It's called the sampling interval. What is the name of the signal sampling frequency? Sampling rate. According to Nyquist's theory, our sampling rate must be what? That of our sampling frequency in order to avoid aliasing in our image. Our sampling rate must be twice of our sampling frequency. Increases in the receiver bandwidth results in increases or decreases in sampling rate. Increases in the receiver bandwidth will increase the sampling rate. Another term for wraparound artifacts? Aliasing. Another name of flow compensation is used to compensate for first order motion, protons moving with constant velocity, and slow flowing vessels. That is, gradient moment nulling. Increasing the field of view would increase or decrease spatial resolution, detail, and the image due to an increase in pixel size. Increasing the field of view would decrease spatial resolution. As the flip angle is increased, SNR increases or decreases to a point called the Ernst angle. SNR increases. What is the name of the optimal flip angle that yields the maximum signal for a particular spin in the least amount of time? Ernst angle. Full saturation suppresses longitudinal magnetization occurs when NMV is flipped at what degree? A full 180 degrees. Partial saturation yields T1 weighting, occurs when NMV is greater, equal, or less than 90 degrees. NMV is greater than 90 degrees. What pulse excites hydrogen protons to a frequency that gives no signal on the image, this occurs prior to the excitation pulse. Pre-saturation pulse. Gradient echo sequences use what to control saturation effects? Use flip angles. In a gradient echo, reducing the flip angle while maintaining the TR reduces or increases saturation. It reduces the saturation. A technique that reduces the scan time by not filling as many lines of case space in the phase direction, while maintaining spatial resolution, is known as a rectangular field of view. Field of view, slice thickness, and matrix are the parameters used to make adjustments to what? To voxel volume. How to calculate slice distance totals and anatomical coverage. Total slice coverage equals slice thickness, plus the interslice gap, for each slice planned. Then, multiply the number of slices by the slice thickness, gap to achieve the anatomical coverage total area. For example, the radiologist wants 3.5 cm of coverage on a core thin slice pituitary sequence. The slice thickness is 3 mm, with a slice gap of half a millimeter, how many slices are required to achieve the desired coverage? Convert 3.5 centimeters into millimeters by multiplying by 10. Each slice yields 3.5 millimeters of anatomical coverage. Therefore 35 divided by 3.5 equals 10 slices required to cover 3.5 centimeters with the parameters given. Let's try some of the multiple choice questions to test what we have learned. Decreasing receiver bandwidth by a factor of 2, choose one of the following answers below. The answer is, D. Increases SNR by the square root of 2. 
Applying two gradients simultaneously during slice selection would A. Produce an artifact B. Produce an oblique slice C. Produce partial volume averaging D. Result in an equipment fault The answer is B. Produce an oblique slice Increasing the TE has what following effects? Pause the video. The answer is option G. B and D only. Decreases the SNR of the image. And, increases the contrast based on T2 relaxation times. Decreasing the slice selection gradient strength will have what effect below on the resulting slice, choose one. The answer is B. Change the slice thickness. Remember, slice selection gradient is the determinant of scan plane and slice thickness. Slice selection gradient is inverse to slice thickness. And, in order to generate an MR image, the slice select gradient must be turned on during the RF energy application. Reducing the TR has what following effects below. Pause the video and choose one. The answer is F, B and D only. Note, reducing the TR decreases the SNR of the image and increases saturation effects. And, three direct relationships of TR, SNR, scan time, and number of slices. How do you obtain a thin slice thickness? Pause the video and choose one. The answer is, C. A steep gradient is applied with the transmit bandwidth at the Larmor frequency of H. Things to remember, increased, steep, Slice select gradient equals thin slices. Decrease slice select gradient equals thick slices. All apply to transmit bandwidth. Pre-saturation pulses are often used too. A. Improve spatial resolution. B. Improve temporal resolution. C. Reduce scan time. D. Reduce flow artifacts. E. Enable bright signal from flowing blood. The answer is, D. Reduce flow artifacts, by increasing the number of saturation bands. Creating additional images in various planes from a 3D data set is accomplished by a technique known as? Choose 1. The answer is B. Multiplanar Reconstruction, MPR. The presaturation pulses typically are found where? Choose 1 below. The answer is D prior to the excitation pulse. Note. A pre-saturation pulse excites hydrogen protons to a frequency that gives no signal on the image, this occurs prior to the excitation pulse. When gradient moment nulling is used as an imaging option in MR sequences, what is the effect below? You should pause the video and think for a few seconds. The answer is B. The minimum TE is increased. Explanation Applying gradient moment nulling flow compensation requires a longer minimum TE is used. Gradient moment nulling flow compensation is used to compensate for first order motion, protons moving with constant velocity, and slow flowing vessels. Reducing the TE affect what below? Please pause and think carefully. The answer is C. Decreases the contrast based on T2 tissue relaxation times. As we learned earlier, TE has an inverse relationship with SNR. And, TE has a direct relationship on T2 contrast. This is a very confusing and pain on the topic. You know what I mean. It's very difficult to remember with all the increases, decreases, ups, downs, etc. Please watch this video multiple times. There is a separate video with multiple choice questions to test your knowledge on this topic. Don't give up. Keep watching. Keep learning. You will pass your board. Good luck. Thank you for watching this video. Test your knowledge with the multiple choice questions. Kindly like, share, comment, and subscribe. That will motivate me to make more videos.